Hi everyone. Welcome to the Wooly Wonka Fibers podcast. My name is Anne. Today is Friday, May 26th. I'm recording this a little early this time, uh, but by the time you all see it, it will likely be Memorial Day here in the U.S., uh, so happy Memorial Day. This is a video podcast about my independent dye and design business, my knitting, my spinning, um, some other crafty stuff, books I'm reading. It's a little hodgepodge emporium of fun things. So I hope you all are doing well. Uh, I wanted to take this opportunity to record a little early this week. Um, my husband has been on business travel and he gets home late tonight and we are going to try to be in the same place for more than like a 12 hour period, which has not happened in over two weeks. So this weekend we're planning on hanging out and doing some cookouts on the grill and some stuff with the dogs and just relaxing. He um, was overseas, so I know he's going to be kind of jet lagged when he gets home. So usually it will take him a couple of days to get his... Um, sleep clock reset. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But anyway, um, how are you all doing? I hope very well. I hope the last two weeks have been good to you. I have gone and come back from the Albuquerque Fiber Fiesta. So if you stopped by the booth to see me and maybe made a purchase or just said hello, thank you so much. I always love chit-chatting with my customers and I wanted to have a big shout out to Joy and Lori and Wendy who came out and helped in the booth um, and also the guild members who uh, from the Drop Stitch Guild who came and helped with the extra booth that had my finished item display uh, of garments and other pieces in it. That was a huge help to me to have an extra couple sets of hands, eyes, just people who could answer questions. It was really, really greatly appreciated. So thank you all very much for that. Um, kind of getting back into the swing of things here. It'll be a little while, a couple of months before I have another show so I can hopefully get caught up with a few things. Um, so let's kind of get started and jump in and talk about some finished items and some upcoming releases and all that good stuff. Um, the first thing that I wanted to share with you guys is that I have finally finished the baby card again. Here she is. The pattern is called hyphen and I will put a link to that in the show notes. It is knit with my Aceland DK which is a superwash, 100% um, superwash merino. It has a really cute little slip stitch pattern there on the yoke and the sleeve cuffs. And the colorway is Luna. Uh, I have knit this in my t in the two year size for my new little cousin. Um, so she was born in February, but from what I hear, she is going to be tall. She's already growing like a weed. Both her parents are tall. So I added these really cute, oops, trying to get that folded, little baby duck buttons that I had in stash. So this one is done. I am so happy with how this came out. I think it is super cute. Uh, I think it's going to be super cute on her. Uh, so I need to get a card and wrap it, but this will go out in the post sometime this upcoming week. So you know, several months late, but she's not going to be in size, the size two, um, this week anyway, but, um, they are up in Minnesota. So the winters there are long and come early. So, um, her, her folks will have that for her when the cold weather comes. Really happy to have that off of my needles. Next up. Uh, I think I had mentioned before um, that the summer issue of Filament Magazine is about to launch. You can actually pre-order a print copy, which gets you a free copy of the ebook delivered to your Ravelry library. Um, those are at the printer. They should be ready to ship out mid-June. And the whole collection will be releasing on June 1st. 
This was the group of items that I took photographs for when I was back on the East Coast in April. And so since Kathleen came down to meet me, um, and half the items are hers, she took those home to New York. So you'll have to wait to see the entire collection. But I do have a few things that I can share with you, half of the items, which are mine. So let's hop right on into those. June is a very busy release month for me, and so I have a stack of shawls living over there on my work table, which you'll have to wait and see. They'll actually have already released, but I'll have those samples to show you guys next time I record in mid-June. Um, so the four items that I did for the Summer Filament, um, and I should say that our theme for that issue was coastal... Uh, coastal East Coast, think Newport, Rhode Island, think lots of watery colors and beach and rocky shores and that kind of feel. That's what we were going for. So the first piece is um, this great little cardigan that I knit um, with a classic Elite Yarns uh, fire, Firefly. Um, this is Ebb and Flow. It has a slightly A-line shape to it, and it's a little bit wrinkled because it got soaked in the driving rainstorm in which we shot photographs. Um, it's knit from the top neck down. It's got three bands of this very simple kind of undulating eyelet wave pattern on the yoke. Um, like I said, a slightly A-line shape, so there's a little bit of a flare to it, which you can kind of see there. Um, the sleeves are elbow length, but you could you could extend them if you like um, full length sleeves that also have that little scalloped eyelet pattern on them. I chose to just put buttons down to the bust. I wanted it to be kind of an open. Sorry about that. I banged into my desk, jiggled the camera. Um, kind of an open, like wear over a tank top uh, kind of sweater like a layering piece that you could wear over a long sleeve t-shirt, a short sleeve t-shirt, a sleeveless tank, um, a sundress, kind of straightforward, easy knitting. That's the kind of knitting I like to do in the summer. Not necessarily a huge big project that's, you know, huge time commitment and heavy yarn sitting in your lap. Something that you could work on fairly easily um, even if you were sitting on the beach. From here down is stockinette. It's pretty straightforward, right? So this little cardigan I love. I think I'm going to get a ton of wear out of it with khakis for the summer. And so let me show you the camisole that I designed. So this is knit from Classic Elite's Soft Linen, which I think is a great yarn for summer. It's got a linen component to it, so um, it kind of stays nice and crisp. It shows off stiff stitch definition really nicely. Say that three times fast. Um, the pattern name is Downdrift. It is knit in the round from the bottom hem up to the armpits. You divide here for the sleeves, the armhole openings. Um, you add in a little pico trim here, which you can add a bow to, a little ribbon if you like to have it slightly more fitted. It's a empire type raised waist. Um, you do not obviously have to have this. You can leave it hanging looser if you like that look. It's got um, pico trim here at the neckline and also on the, the armhole openings. The front and the back are knit exactly the same um, in terms of the shaping. So it's got like a scoop neck here in the back. And again, just a nice basic summer layer that you could wear over a t-shirt or you could wear just as is as a camisole. Um, I think it would be very pretty in many different yarns. Um, another pretty straightforward pattern. Um, it does have some lace down here, but it's very simple. It's yarn overs, knit two together, and slip slip knit. You just alternate the leaning of the decreases to achieve this sort of seaweed um, bubble, like water bubble um, pattern to it. 
So another quick knit, certainly something you could take as a travel project. It does not require a whole lot of, you know, reading of charts, reading of pattern, reading of anything. It knits up very quickly, no sleeves, all good summer project things. <clears throat> the next set of items that are included in the collection is this pair of socks, which I have um, called Driftwood. They have a very simple textured pattern on the um, legs and down onto the foot. Uh, short row heels and a rounded toe. These are started at the top cuff up here and knit down the leg and then onto the foot. This particular permutation is size medium, but there are three sizes in the pattern. These are knit um, using my Rhiannon sock base and the colorway Driftwood, which is a very subtle kind of taupey gray brown colorway that I think looks great with khakis, but looks pretty darn awesome with denim. Um, just great pair of year round socks. And again, another really awesome travel project, fairly fast knit. Um, just enough texture to kind of keep you interested on the legs there. Um, but once you get the, the pattern set up, you really do not need to um, read it from the chart. It's a two row pattern repeat. And then last, but definitely not least, is Estuary. This is a two color shawl that I designed um, in, again, kind of a neutral khaki and that dusty blue. It starts at the top back neckline. It has some garter stitch happening, a really simple eyelet pattern, some stockinette, some little stripey bits, and then the eyelet pattern is repeated to make that um, edging. Finished off with a Pico hem. Um, this was a new to me yarn. Um, called Lioness or Leoness. I'm not sure which is the correct way to pronounce it. But again, it's a linen blend. Um, it has a gorgeous drape. It blocked out so nicely. It's in a elongated triangular shape, which you can see there. And I think a very wearable one. You can wear it with the point in the front, um, kind of like a bandana, if you like that. but you can also wear it as a more traditional shawl with point in the back and still have nice long ends in the front. Um, so those are all in the summer issue of Filament Magazine. It is coming out shortly if you would like a print copy. Um, I will put a link to the website where you can pre-order your print copy um, and then um, the entire ebook will also be available as a Ravelry download after June 1st. So um, you can look for any of the patterns. I will put a list of the pattern names in the show notes so you guys can find those if you're so inclined. Um, on my needles now, I have moved on. I'm working on fall. Um, I have one pair of socks that I'm working on as a standalone project that I need to have done by the 1st of July. I have one sock knit, the other is on the needles. Um, so that's moving along and then I have started the first of the sweaters that I'm knitting for the fall filament collection. And then next time I talk to you, I have a whole stack of shawls. We'll kind of go through those. Those are all individual pattern releases. Um, we'll just do those because I think this was plenty. This should be plenty of eye candy to motivate you all to maybe do some summer knitting. All right, that is the knitting world. 15 minutes in, all right, doing pretty good. Let's talk about spinning. I finished up the um, Cheviot wool spin that I had been working on. I got that all plied up. I wound up with a fingering weight yarn, two ply, which I am pretty sure I'm going to use for socks, but I have not decided on that yet. The colorway is Under the Cherry Tree. It is a 
blend of a blue purple and kind of a bright pink and some redder purples and little tiny shots of a blue green in there. Super happy with how this came out. I love I loved the spin. The wool spun up just beautifully. And I love the colors. I think the colors in this are just gorgeous. Totally up my alley. Kind of match what I have on. Um, so no specific plans necessarily to get this on the needles anytime soon, but um, a finished spin. I will take this opportunity to remind anybody who spins that if you would like to join us for the Willy Wonka Fibers Tour de Fleece team, that um, has I have a sign up list already started, and that will kick off in July with the tour. Um, very casual, spin something that you like. That's easy. That's all there is to it. Um, so I would love to have you come and join us. Um, if you would like to, please feel free to hop on over to the Ravelry group and sign up there. We have a small team going, and um, if it's any, anything like the last few years, it will be a fun time. So <clears throat> next up, I decided I was going to go back to do some stash spinning, and I just picked something completely at random. This is from the autumn 2011 yes I am aware that's almost six years ago um, mixed blessings fiber club from fat cat knits uh, the fiber is a 75 percent BFL and 25 percent um, Tessa silk blend this is before Ginny started um, naming her colorways so that's all I know is it was autumn 2011 anyway she sent two um, two and a half ounce braids um, of kind of coordinating colors like she does. That's how Ginny has run her clubs in the past. So the first is this gorgeous set of blue purples. There's turquoise and royal and a plum in there. And the other one, excuse me, because I threw it on the floor, is the warm palette, which is kind of a pomegranate and um, burnt orange kind of pumpkin and some yellow golds in there. So here they are together. And I'm on the fence about how I want to spin these because I think I've seen some of the ones that other folks have finished, you know, in the previous six years where they spun one ply of each and plied them together but I'm kind of leaning towards spinning them separately you know plying doing this plying that into a two ply yarn spinning this plying that into a two ply yarn and then knitting something with stripes because the contrast between those is so good I think it, they would be it would be wonderful that way so maybe a striped shawl of some kind um, but I have a I have five total ounces to work with. There's two and a half ounces of each of the colorways, so um, plenty there. I usually spin BFL slightly more densely, and therefore I get less yardage than I do with merino. But there's still going to be 400 plus yards out of the that five ounces easily. So leaning towards doing the stripey bits to be determined. We'll find out. We'll see what strikes me when I get those on the wheel. <clears throat> but that is my next spin. That's what I'm working on. Uh, kind of getting prepped, ready for a tour de fleece, which I love, love doing. It gives me an excuse to say this is what I'm focusing on for this month and um, get some good spinning time in. Okay, spinning. That is it. Let's talk on about the little bit of stitching I've been doing that I can share with you guys. I am working on a very small piece, but it is full coverage. It is this design, which is called Star Weaver. The artwork is by Tom Cross, and it's charted by Heaven and Earth Designs. Not the greatest picture, but you can see there's a wizard down at the bottom and kind of like a bolt of magic or something coming out there at the top. 
So uh, this is the size that it will make a bookmark of, of sorts. And I'm stitching this up for my dad. I want to try to get it done for the holidays. We'll see how that goes. Let's see if that will correct the color. Not really. It is a very dark blue, but it is not quite as dark as it's showing up in that picture. So this is about halfway down page one, and then there's a total of three pages. So I would say about there is the end of page one. That's my goal to try to get finished for the summer months is to finish those the first page. I feel like I'm making progress on that. So I have a little bit left to do up here in the um, light colored spot. It's missing some stitches. I have a few extra stitches to put in there where the color kind of comes down like little shooting stars. And then a whole lot of blue. Blue and blue. So I'm trying to kind of alternate and I do one um, strand of thread of the just plain blue and then I'll try to go up and I'll do a couple of the little lighter colors and kind of alternate back and forth just because the blue is tedious. I will not lie to you. But I think it's going to be awesome when it's done, so well worth it. And, you know, it is relatively small, all things being equal. So, um, yeah, so that's what I've been working on this month. All right, finally, let's talk about what I've been reading. So last time we talked, I was working on uh, the book 4321 and had told you guys that I it was a give up. I couldn't, I could not get through that book. And I think I was actually so burned out with the slog of it and that it took me almost a week to even pick something else to read. I just wound up like surfing blogs and stuff like that in the evenings when I went to bed. I didn't even really read very much. So needed something to refresh the palate, so to speak. So I picked up a book that I had had on my to-read list for a while called The Book of Bees. Now this is not The Secret Life of Bees, which I know a lot of folks have read. This is The Book of Bees. The author is Sue Hubble. I'll put a link down below. Um, it's basically a year in the life of a beekeeper. She's based in the Ozarks. She raises bees as her living. That's her profession. Um, something she came to later in life. And while the book is described as like a guide to beekeeping, it's not, it's not really like you, you would need more information to go out and start raising bees on your own than this book. But it does have a lot of sort of the technical little bits about a year in the life of a bee as seen by the beekeeper. So she talks about, you know, when the pollen starts when bees can act, when things start flowering in the spring she talks about overwintering the bees she talks about how to move the bees from place to place um, how to harvest honey at a very high level so for me it was a really fun fun interesting book about all the little details of beekeeping which I find interesting I, I find books that are about things other people do that are Audit, oddity careers, I guess. Um, so I, I enjoyed this book a lot. It was exactly what I needed. Not super long. Um, kind of a charming little story. And, you know, she has a lot of sort of contemplative time. And she talks about that as well. And what she's contemplating. And kind of the rhythm of the year for her. So, yeah. Uh, I would recommend this book. If you like if you like bees at all, want to know a little bit more about them, their social structure, all that's in there. Um, and as well as just a sort of sweet little yearly journal kind of book. <clears throat> Excuse me. So my next up, um, which I just downloaded last night because my library got it in, is a book called The Moon in the Palace. Um, which I'll reserve any judgment on because I ha haven't started it, but it was something that was on my to read list for last year. And it was also a Goodreads Choice Award um, from the Goodreads site. So I'm anxious to give that a go. It's a historical novel, <coughs> excuse me, um, about a concubine in the uh, Chinese court. 
um, uh, the emperor's, one of the emperor's concubines. Sounds interesting. It's kind of um, a culture that I don't read historical novels about very often, mostly because I don't think there's very many written, you know, comparatively speaking. Um, so hopefully I will get some traction in on that one over the long holiday weekend and have something fun to tell you guys about in a couple of weeks when we talk again. So that's my plan to uh, be back in two weeks or thereabouts to share my stuff with you guys, uh, all my crafty goodness. And so until then, um, if you are here in the United States, I hope you have a wonderful Memorial Day holiday if you are lucky enough to have that off um, and are kind of getting geared up for all the changes that summertime seems to bring with school and university being over and graduations and maybe weddings and family vacations and all that good stuff. So until I talk to you again, take care of yourself and happy crafting.